Maths is more than just numbers. Maths is symbols and shapes. Maths is what things are made of and how we communicate. Everything we do involves maths, in every way. Most people think of maths as a boring, theory-based school subject, but really, maths can be anything you want it to be, if you're interested enough to pursue it. Maths is language, machines, time, money, history, art, and anything else you care to mention. In this video, we'll just be focusing on maths in music. Music is riddled with maths in many obvious and surprising ways. You might even say maths is the building blocks of music. Here are some examples of how music and maths are inseparably entwined. Tempo is the speed of a beat, or how many beats to play in one minute. BPM stands for beats per minute, so you could say tempo and the BPM are the same thing. Sometimes there's a number above the notes in sheet music. That's the BPM. A beat is the basic pulse of music, or what you might tap your foot to. In music, you find words like andante and moderato, which are Latin words used to inform you what speed to play, and can substitute the BPM number. Without tempo, music would be very confusing, like an orchestra without a conductor. Everyone would be playing at different speeds. The group would be out of time and synchronisation. This is why tempo guides us. Rhythm is made of notes of different lengths put together to create a pattern. It is an indispensable element of any song. Rhythm can exist without melody, in percussion as in the drum beats, but melody cannot exist without rhythm. It is easy to get the beat and rhythm mixed up. They work closely together in music, but they are not the same. Rhythm is made up of sounds and silences put together to form patterns, while beats make up the tempo. We also use the word beat to mean any untuned note, like a drum beat, which is part of the rhythm. This is where it gets confusing. Rhythmic beats may be longer, shorter, or softer than others. They may also be stressed or unstressed. Rhythm. Ratios. Ratios simply explain how different things relate to each other. From finding the age of the universe to how many beats in a bar of music, ratios give us a way to show complicated things in a simple way. A simple ratio in music is the time signature. For example, 4-4, four, four, the most common. This shows there are four crotchet beats, or quarter notes, in a bar. Therefore, the ratio is 4 to 1, four crotchet beats in one bar. Also, in music, you have octaves, seven different notes repeated endlessly at different frequencies. These notes create scales, starting on one note and stopping when you get to the next variation of that note. Playing these notes creates a pleasant sound to human ears because of the ratios between the different wavelengths of the notes. With symbols, you could say they are like fractions. A semi-brave is a whole note, a minimum is a half note, a crotchet is a quarter of a note, and a quaver is an eighth of a note. You can therefore use equations to find out what you can make go into a beat. It is similar, in fact, to finding out the right number or fractions you add together when answering a math question. You could work out that one minimum and two crotchets equal a semi-brave, or if you add one half note and two quarter notes, you get a whole note. This is one very obvious connection between music and mass. Sound, the most important part of music. We can usually hear frequencies, or sounds, between 20 and 17,000 hertz. Hertz is what you use to measure the number of sound waves that reach your ear per second. Sound waves are created when a noise is made and, like light, sound travels in waves, hence the name. Musical pitch, unlike other types of pitch you may have heard of, is how high or low a sound is, and the higher the pitch, or the frequency, the higher the hertz. Again, if you lower the pitch, the hertz measurement is lower. In regard to what makes a sound higher or lower in pitch, the explanation lies in how it is made. We can use these drums as an example. To make a higher sound, the vibrations only travel a short distance. The same can be used in a wind instrument with how far the air travels. You can see when we strike the smaller drum, a high note is produced. However, when we strike the larger drum, the vibrations are longer. This produces a different, lower sound. The same is true with other types of instruments. On a guitar, for example, the shorter you make the string, the higher the note will be when you pluck it. When musicians want to play a certain tune, we have names for the frequencies that we use most often. To make it simple, we use the names of the first seven letters of the alphabet. Thanks to everyone who made this video possible.